Hello, people of the world. It is Friday. It is time to finish this case on Sherlock Holmes and the Devil's Daughter. A study in green. I wonder how many chapters there are to this game. I have no idea. Anyways, starting this stream on an entire half hour late. Trying to keep to that schedule. I've been pretty good up to up to today. But I was working on other things, so I mean Yeah, it's whatever. So Sherlock books that I have read for this week. The stories are the five orange peels and the man or a man with a twisted lip. The man with a twisted lip. Good stories. I have deductions to make. Or maybe not. Alright, please proceed to your deduction space and form your conclusion. Let's see. All right, well, I'm kind of just rolling with that. We'll see. So yeah, like the five orange pips is about the Ku Klux Klan. Oddly enough, wasn't expecting that. A murder at my club. What a disaster for our reputation. Okay, investigate the murder of Zacharias Graystroke. Okay, how do I finish this case? That's what I'm questioning. So am I trying to make these all blue? So let's say Sir Charles is unaware. No, that just makes it red. Let's say there's no revenge. Let's say Sir Charles saw the statue Takunuman running away. So that becomes blue. Okay. Witness Sir Charles saw Bernard Marley's automaton running away in the morning of the murder. So what if I go back and say suspect is small? Huh. If I go here and says due to bitterness. Okay, so they do have to be blue to make a decent conclusion. Bernard Marley is guilty. Well, he said, yeah, he does have that note saying that Takunu Man wants to use him. Bernard Marley believes in a curse and adapts his statues as killing uh, automatons in the hope that he may become the chosen one. Our treatment would be better to send him to a senator. Arrest Bernard Marley. He did not hesitate to kill due to his superstitious beliefs. Yep. I think you're a little crazy. So I probably could have included this in the last episode, huh? Probably. But I had to work. 
that day. I was just getting salty from the whole temple run. Yeah. Wasn't enjoying that very much. So let's see. What's happened? Did someone else die? Did Tekunuman strike again? No, which you know very well. Because you are the killer arm of this so-called curse. Me? No, I'm not. I don't believe in any of that rubbish. I have no choice but to hand you over to the justice, Mr. Marley. Bernard Marley killed Zacharias Grace Stroke. Grace Stoke in hopes of becoming Takun Uman's right hand man. Marley is a danger to society and should be punished. Okay, so check conclusion. So it is that wrong? I accept my decision. Alright, next chapter, Infamy. Not sure if I did that right. If you know what the right answer is, you can leave your answer in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And I made that joke yesterday. Because I'm original. And just sitting here in a room talking to myself, playing a Sherlock game, discussing the books with no one. So then the man with a twisted face, all that was about was the guy started begging for money. Realized I can make more money by begging and by actually working so that's what he did is hit away from his wife and his wife saw him through the window at the opium den so he already had to deal with the people there where he's buying the room so he could go out beg and keep his identity safe so he just faked his own death but then Sherlock you know saw through it that was a very simple case What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, you know, the star of American theater. And he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. Propose another solution. Why don't you stay with Mrs. Hudson? Oh, but Miss Caitlin has more in common with Miss Alice, and they get along so well. Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will. Brains. This dude's a devil, ain't he? Totally looks like the devil. This isn't the devil, then I will eat my shoe. Live, on camera, follows fashion trends. Yeah, it's the devil wears Prada, right? Broche with flag. American Prada wants to attract attention. He, he wants attention. British branded tobacco, Holmes preferred brand. Oh, you're gonna try to get on my good side, huh, devil? Mm -hmm. 
horse in wild. Pocket mirror. A self affected. He's full of himself. Imprecise. Damn it. Orson Wilde, not yet 30 years of age, is a star of American theater who came to London to study the role of Sherlock Holmes. It is pro probable that he began his study previously. He smokes the same brand of tobacco as Holmes. Orson is narcissistic and follows fashion. He admires his own reflection. He wears a brooch with the American flag to attract attention. Uh, excuse me, I had to cough there. Um, I still think he's full of himself. Seems like the devil. Mr. Wild, your room. Charming. <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. That's a fascinating not. hat. I'm going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wild. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. Ha ha ha! You're trying too hard there, Wild. Find out more information about Orson Wild. So, American Star. I like how it's in quotations. An American star of the stage visits Sherlock Holmes in order to study for his new role when a curious incident in the night time throws the pair into a case. What will this unusual duo discover? Oh, so I'm partnering with them. Okay. Oh, and I got another note here. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, once I'm killed by Tukunu Man, you will finally realize how poor of a detective and a man you truly are. Putting me behind bars won't do anything to save me. The curse is far more powerful than you might imagine. It's only a matter of time before you are cursed too. I should have probably just put him in the insane asylum, huh? That was probably the right decision. It would be better to examine Wilde's belongings before you return. Oh, we're creeping through his stuff. Okay. Wait, he's... Staying in my room? No. That wouldn't be right. Staying in Kate's room? Uh, Wilde's already making himself at home. There we go. What do you got here, bud? While truly has a perfect disguise kit, do actors really need all this? Maybe. I use the same brushes for makeup. Let's see here. Uh, face powder of an excellent quality. Hmm. Interesting. This must be grease paint. I forgot my hat. Pardon? I'm just checking. Um. You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it. Might be, uh, practicing my disguises, you know me. <sighs> Sorry, Kate. No, 
Don't touch that! No, no. You idiot. Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Unfamiliar step, heels. Hurry, conversation. Not Reply. quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared. And my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. All right, let's do a portrait here. Dint often wears spectacles. That that's what that's called. A dint. Didn't know that before. Expensive brooch. We're gonna say she is rich. All right, you're a rich girl. No, 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 no. I don't want to get copy strike. Ring, engagement ring. Saying it's an engagement ring. Different boots. Didn't notice boots. Boom. Got that one right. Mary Sutherland is a good tempered young lady of 25 years of age. She has poor eyesight. She has failed to notice that she is wearing mismatched boots. Mary is a wealthy young lady. She is engaged to be married. Yeah, she's wearing different boots because she was in a hurry to get here. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes, although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters' Ball. Mr. Winderbank did not wish for me and mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together, but then father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, Father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until Father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Hmm. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He's a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha, a love letter. Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her. <laughs> Holmes is like, yeah, no, I don't know this dude. Different boots. Wouldn't have anything to do with the, with the dents. Mary's poor eyesight, probably myopia. Okay. Secretive character, Mary's income. Yeah, no. 
So this is exactly from one of the stories that I've recently read. A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? God, that American accent, man. Here, let me just read this advertisement beforehand. Public notice, a disappearance. A gentleman by the name of Mr. H Hosmer Angel has mysteriously vanished. Mr. Angel is around is of around 5 feet 7 inches in height of strong build with a sallow sallow complexion he is black haired with bushy side whiskers and a moustache he is likely to be wearing tinted spectacles on last sighting mr angel was dressed in a black silk frock coat with a black waistcoat and gray harris tweed trousers he is known to have been employed in an office in Leadenhall Street. If you are in possession of any information, please come forward. There will be a reward for any help given in finding this gentleman. Yeah, it's all typewriter, so she can't see. So I think. My dear love, please don't worry, your sweet head. Do you believe that I would say anything to your family who understand nothing of love? I had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Such a short time, but it was enough for me to know that you are my life. I want to spend every minute from now on with you. I wish that it were possible. I love you very much, and I am waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more upon his travels so we may so we can meet again Hosmer Angel This is strange the love letter is typewritten Good quality paper quite smooth Fairly common ink nothing special Mhm mm I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, uh -huh. do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. Dear Mary, I'm taking the opportunity of sending you these few lines in a hope that they find you and your mother in good health. France is a nice country to look at, but it is the same as anywhere. There are rogues here who deceive and mistreat their women. Men nowadays are so dishonorable, they won't think twice to break your heart. I hope that you will be an obedient girl and look after your mother and that you will take my advice. Stay at home. I'll be back before long. Your father. The stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Whoa. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Mm, I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm, take my advice, stay at home. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. Mm -hmm. This letter has a defect. Ah, and it's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. One more letter with a defect. One more letter with a defect. So look for the K. Okay, where's the K? I love you very much. I'm waiting for a moment when you're so Come together. 
Didn't we wear your fuck? Wait, W. Oh, there's a K. Another letter match with the same defects. Okay, W is not a defect. E. M. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. Yeah, it's doing all the same clues. The same people, too. So, South House, the House, Mary Angel's letter. Letters are the same, and were written by one person. Yeah, obviously. Oh, wait. Go back there. Work travels. Keep it on. Mary had the opportunity to socialize without her stepfather's knowledge. Keep it home. Work travels. Mary's income. The family has an interest in. Mary remains single as they have access to her inheritance. Mary's stepfather. Mary and her stepfather trusted one another. Mary is told to remain at home as her stepfather believed it would be better for profit. Work travel, secretive character. For some reason, Hosmer Angel met with Mary only when her stepfather was away on business trips. Mary's stepfather was unaware of her. Oh, strange behavior. Mary's stepfather lied. He didn't take his business trip as he has found as he has had found out that Mary was disobeying him. Mary's Mary's stepfather lied. Yep, Mr. Wendy Bank is Mr. Angel. Yeah, this is straight out of like the second story. Mary's stepfather, Mr. Wendy Bank, adopted a disguise and played the role of Mr. Hosmer Angel to keep his stepdaughter and her money close to home. Generally, young lady who should be allowed to live her own life. She Passion. Now we're just going to tell the truth. You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory as he's done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But, uh, thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes, you could have been more diplomatic. Nah. She deserves to know the truth. Come on. Why'd I have her li live a life like that? There's definitely more steps taken in the uh, actual story of that. But I mean, that that's the conclusion right there. It actually goes to typewriters and like checks to see if anybody with that name was there working using typewriters. And he found the typewriter for the defects. Yada yada, went back, solved it, boom. Simple case.
just like the man with the crooked face. Very simple case. Done. Bada bing, bada boom. Moving on. Time for breakfast, Watson. At night. What's going on? Mr. Holmes, is everything all right? Oh my God. Go back to your flat and stay there with Kate. Hmm. It's ticking. It's a bomb. It's a bomb, ain't it? Yeah, it's a bomb. It's ticking. Oh, what? Well, what other option do I have here? It's ticking. Yes, it's ticking. I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. Okay then. Uh, a fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. I have two <laughs> minutes to defuse it. Uh. Ah, this solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires, and the bomb will explode. A source of electricity for the detonation. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. There are wires. A package with explosive material. There are wires going in and out. It's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside. A package with... Well, uh... How... How do I defuse it? A fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret of mine. If it loses its powers of... A source of electricity for the... De a package... Cut the blue wire. Cut. Nope. <laughs> A fancy ticking homemade. Okay. Not that wire. A fancy ticking. There we go. Never mind. <laughs> God dang it. Now if I cut the other blue. Okay. And this blue. That blue. Did 
There we go. Followed it back. Not so difficult. <laughs> what happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? <laughs> Mr. Who Hunt, do you think? Are you alright? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five five, with black hair and a hair lip. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. Okay. Tried to blow me up, brah. Pocket knife. Looks to be of American quality. Mm hmm. I have no idea. There's our hint. JT are the owner's initials. Let's What's see this? What's there could be a hidden message that's been written with some lemon juice. No, don't touch anything else. <laughs> no, don't touch anything else. There are ink stains on this piece of paper. I could read the text with the help of my analysis table if Wilde hadn't already destroyed it. Rally Mohawks, bring out your axes and tell King George will pay no taxes on his foreign tea. His threats are vain and vain to think to force our girls and wives to drink his vile bohia. Then rally, boys, and hasten, hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. Okay. I'm a thin builder on five five as a hair lip. Okay. A poem. But what does it mean? This isn't a poem. It's a song called Rally Mohawks. That great moment when America rebelled against England's dominance. Then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. And I bet they hoisted a tankard of ale and invented a new nation. Along with deciding if this was the week they got to dump some tea into Yon Harbor. <laughs> Why ever did he keep such a song in his pocket? Because he's an American, obviously. It's freaking wild. Historical song caption moment when America's Americans rebelled against England's dominance. A secret location, Green Dragon, is mentioned in the song. Okay. Wild, don't you touch anything. Chemistry, poison, toxin, mark time. Newspapers, encyclopedias, history. There we go. The Green Dragon Tavern was a public house used as both a tavern and a meeting place and was located on Union Street in Boston's North End in the early 19th century. A number of replicas of the Green Dragon were opened across Europe. One of these is now located in London, near the harbor in the district of Whitechapel. Here it is. That's all I can do for now. Let's try and get a few hours of sleep. How can you sleep when there is someone trying to kill me? How selfish. You. Nobody cares about you. 
I keep wanting to call him Oscar Wilde. I think that they're trying to reference that. Little hint and nudge. Another famous novelist. I mean, he's kind of like a little flamboyant actor. Last name Wild. First name, I even forgot this dude's name. Starts with an O. Is his name Orson? I don't know. You're gonna still have deductions to make. But I'm thinking that Wild's trying to kill me. So I can like bring more attention to his stage theater. Sherlock is dead. And I'll come see the his last tale on stage with Wild playing Sherlock. It's messed up, man. It's messed up. The next morning. Analysis table destroyed evidence. Orson deliberately destroyed the analysis table and the attacker's evidence. Yeah, we're gonna say the tavern, homie bomb, yep, no, no connection there. Well, better get dressed. Bandit outfit. Oh, jeez. The coughing fit I'm having today, I think I'm going, getting sick. Ugh. Alright, well, I'm dressed. Or say you're not going to try killing me today, are you? He's so funny. What is it, Kate? Did you sleep well, Kate? Very well, thank you, Father. Is that wild? Whatever is he doing now? He's transforming you into a legend. Oh, silly man. Kate, what's the matter? Well, I just came by to tell you that I'm going to the zoo with Alice. We'll be having lunch in town. The zoo? What on earth for? Perhaps because it is my birthday today? Called you, didn't I? Of course I remembered. Here's some spending money. Go and enjoy your special day. All right. I'll go then. Kate. You never do anything right. All right, all right. Come here. Ouch. I've had enough of you not caring about me. I do care. I've just had a, a difficult night. Yes, Alice told me about the bomb, but you wouldn't. Kate, I... I only want to protect you. You don't understand anything. I wish Alice would adopt me. Don't be ridiculous. I don't know why my parents entrusted me to you. Did they really know you? Kate, come back. Ouch. So Miss Alice did tell her. Such a waste. <laughs> Alice, I have an odd sense about her. It's as if she's playing with Kate's feelings. This would be a good opportunity to investigate Alice's flat while they're absent. And anyway, 
It'd be better to visit the Green Dragon Tavern during the evening. Oh my, I see you and Kate are best friends already. Ouch. Well, Miss Alice had no place to be uh, telling Kate things like that. Anyways, where is your flat, Miss Alice? If you even are a miss. Mrs. Hudson is not at home. Whoops. Force is not an option. I should find another one inside out. A back room. A back room. Better not go outside, the journalists would notice me. Oh, okay, so how am I supposed to... The balcony, of course. So am I going to find a pentagram in here? You may use several lock picks at once to lift the plates and open the lock. What are you hiding, Miss Kate? No space for this lockpick. Hmm. Dear Miss, thank you for your most recent delivery of shirts for my cousin. They are marvelous. As I told you, this Saturday I shall be attending the wedding breakfast of my dear friend, so I need to look stunning. Please be sure to finish my dress by Friday at the latest. I will send for it in the morning. Alice has recently used this. It appears that Alice sleeps in this armchair, as uncomfortable as that must be. What is this? Hmm. Uh, let's just examine the smell. It has no smell. If I examine the taste, will it kill me? Uh, it has a bitter taste. No smell, a bitter taste. It's a tincture of barbiturate. Whatever that means. A soothing drug to aid sleep. Alice prepared a gift for Kate. She remembered her birthday. 
Well, women are good at that sort of thing. <laughs> so what else we got? Rotate the dials to plot an entire path through the maze in order to open the casket. Yeah, so that first one was right. So it would go in. So go up and then I need it to go right. Or it can go down. There we go. My dear little Alice, if you read this letter, then it means that I am no longer in this world and that my illness has defeated me. Please try not to be sad, dear, for I have lived a good life. My only regret is that you are now alone and you will be sent to live with who knows who. An unknown family, I do not trust the institution institutions who behave so cruelly towards your father but please take courage my dear angel you know the secrets which allow you to speak with the souls of the dead so we may talk soon okay Alice's childhood was spent with her aunt until the aunt's death hmm a phonograph cylinder Dear Alice, thinking of you now has made me remember the past, and as you well know, I am always a warrior. Every time that you were sent to live with yet another family, I hoped you would be happy, but people are cruel, aren't they? It angers me to think of you so miserable in every home, to be considered more as a servant rather than a member of a family. You suffered so much, but I am happy now to congratulate you on your 21st birthday. Now all your horrors are behind you. You are grown an independent and a beautiful woman I wish you the life that you deserve with all of the happiness that's possible your friend Anna hmm. Alice was unhappy with all of her adopted families he wakes early despite the fact that the lamp in his room glows into the small hours he provides a street urchin with work. I believe the boy's name to be Wiggins. His friend, Dr. Watson, is always nearby. They seem very close. He is respected by Inspector Lestrade. Although he never works with the police, Kate is so sweet and honest and naive, but Mr. Holmes doesn't spend much time with her. She's spying on me. No, really, Holmes? Did that just occur to you? All right. What else we got here? Looks as though Alice has not slept here for a long time. Now what? No, no, Manole. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. It looks as though Alice uh, has not slept here for a long time. Doesn't seem like I'm actually seeing you in the stream viewing, but that's cool. Thank you. How is your day? How are you doing? Oh, here we go. Here's the satanic stuff, huh? Spiritualism and psycho research. Strange taste in literature. Uh, that's all you gotta say about that. Okay. Sarah de Bouvier is Alice's mother. Wait. Okay. Huh. Dear Miss. De Bouvier, I wanted to inform you that your rental contract has been prepared. You can come to collect it whenever convenient any evening of the week. Mrs. Hudson, landlady. Okay. And this is a receipt. Certified copy of an entry of birth. Her full name is Alice Floella Hamilton. Huh. Alice used her mother's name to lease the flat. 
Interesting. But what does it mean? Kate probably sleeps here. With this broken window right above her, it seems safe, Alice. Want to judge me on my parenting skills? Anything? All right, I got this phonograph thing. You always gotta love when the game can be a little interactive like that. And outside the window, I can still see me. What's his face? Wild. Down there talking. So, okay. Seems pretty creepy. This lock is quite new. I got the key. So let's open her up. See what kind of satanic stuff's in here. Gotta be, come on. <sighs> Quick time event? No. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. There we go. There is the pentagram. That is exactly what I was looking for. Alright. That right there might make a good screenshot. The wheelchair is the same as the one in the photograph above. Interesting. So she's lived here a lot longer than what I'm being led to believe. Okay. That music was unsettling. William Hamilton. But I know him. He was a bandit who I arrested 20 years ago. Huh. My distant ancestor, Horace Vernon. knows about Zacharias Greystoke, the victim from the bowling club. I solved that crime. Boy, did I solve it correctly, though? Hmm. Talking with her father, William Hamilton. Oh. Uh. Hmm. So what else we got here? It was Alice's father? He was arrested by Sherlock Holmes and later died in 1880. Huh. So we're not going to examine this. That's not worth it for you. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. Huh. I know thrilling commentary here, huh? Huh. Darwin? Charles Darwin, English naturalist and geologist. What is the relevance of that? Yeah, we're not going to interact with that till the last thing here. Abraham Lincoln. She's trying to contact all the dead because she's a spiritualist or a Satanist. It's interesting because Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was actually 
really into spiritualism. He would do seances like on a weekly. Like this was a dinner party for the guy. And he honestly believed it. Thought it was a science that should be examined further. Is there anything that I'm missing here? The drawer is right. Mass suicide leaves 27 dead at Cuda, Spain. The bodies of 27 people, including four children, have been discovered in Cuda, Spain. The deceased, who are members of the Veneration of the Dead, had consumed a soft drink laced with deadly cyanide and sedatives. Police were only able to save one young woman, Alice Florilla Hamilton, the lady who was unharmed yet in deep shock remains unable to shed any light on this sad case. Yeah. My word, look at this setup. Alice practices spiritualism. I finished here, time to go. Huh. Alright. Uh, why is there a loading screen? Can I just walk out? It's closed. Front door, uh... Okay, I guess I, I thought I was spending a lot more time in here than I was. You know, I just realized the person who just subscribed, maybe they're watching something else and that's why they're subscribing and no one sees this. This gets a video game sins. Ding. Like, I guess, I mean, in actuality, it is hard to get people to look up when you're doing things. Like, most people look down, especially this day and age of smartphones, you know. Everyone wants to look down. Getting someone to look up. Not so much. That's why billboards are so big. Okay, that's not accurate, but you understand where I'm going with it. Thanks to Wild, my analysis table has been completely destroyed. Thanks. Is there anything else I can examine? William Hamilton. Anthropology. That's not the one I need. That's not the one I need. No. Won't be that. Newspapers. 1880, William Hamilton's death. There we go. The Strand. A failed escape from Newgate Prison. Four prisoners crawled through a narrow drainage pipe to escape from the Newgate Prison in London. It was a well-planned daylight operation, but ultimately unsuccessful thanks to the fast reaction of our police force. Two of the prisoners were killed. The remaining men were sent back to prison. One of the dead prisoners was the prior criminal lord of London, William Hamilton. As is already known, ha William Hamilton was arrested in 1875 during a Scotland Yard operation under charge of Inspector Lestrade. Lestrade. During that investigation, a major role was played by the consulting detective Sherlock Holmes. After the arrest, and due to his wife being deceased, Hamilton's younger daughter was sent to live with her aunt. Here it is. Yep, got it. Alice Flora Hamilton, a young woman with an unusual hobby. It appears that she believes in her ability to communicate with the dead. She works as a seamstress to earn her living. Her sleep is affected. She takes a drug that contains barbiturate. Arbiturate. She is secretive, adopting a false name to rent her homes at Baker Street, also hiding the fact that Sherlock Holmes 
had arrested her father when she was still a small child. Find out who's behind the attempt on her life. Alright. Well, I believe that is good for this episode of Sherlock Holmes. A little shorter. But I just think it's a clean cut on what where the story's leading. Makes it think, makes it wonder what's going to happen with Miss Alice. And I got this whole attempt on my life still. So, I'll cut it off here. I'm going to read the next couple stories. I'll post what stories I'll be reading on Twitter. So you can keep up with that and see updates to my schedule. I'm feeling like I might switch around what days I'm streaming what. Anyways, thank you for stopping by. Thank you to Lonel Manole for the follow today. Anyone else who was stopped by the channel today, thank you. And if you're watching this post recording, thank you too. Alright, nap time is over. It's time to get up and ride on. Bye.